Welcome back to Weather Nation. We're taking a look at Big Sky, Montana. Things looking absolutely gorgeous there this morning, but we're talking about colder weather moving in as we head throughout the next few days and even the chance for snow nearby. Uh, so if you are in these areas, get ready for that uh, late fall feel, that early winter feel, because we'll be dealing with conditions like that. Uh, but as we talk about temperatures, let's point them out. 45 degrees in Bismarck, 44 degrees in Billings, and 44 degrees in Seattle, while we're dealing with 70s already across the middle of the country, and also upper 70s across parts of the south and east. Now, this warmth in place today will set the stage for severe weather today across parts of the upper Midwest. West, but when we want to describe this air, we're talking about feeling like August at the moment, but colder than average farther toward the north and west. And it's all behind a storm system that's sweeping across the region. Now again, we have temperatures anywhere from the 40s at this hour and potentially uh, right around the mid 30s across much of western Montana, 36 degrees in Missoula. But we are talking about snow being out there because of those cold conditions and because of wet weather moving through. So if you are anywhere across uh, western and into northern parts of Montana, we're dealing with accumulating snow and we're talking about in the advisory areas, uh, we're dealing with anywhere from one to potentially five inches of snow. And then in the warning areas, we're talking about potentially five to eight inches of snow. So this is a threat that we will continue to follow. And again, we have rain showers and we even have snow showers out there as we speak. So if you are in Great Falls, you've seen a few snow showers already this morning. That's starting to fade away for you. But across parts of North Dakota, we are continuing to deal with some of that wintry weather. And again, Great Falls, you're clearing out. But eastern parts of Montana, Glasgow even, you're still finishing up with some wet weather at this hour. Now again, that cold air is behind a cold front that will help bring severe weather across parts of the upper Midwest today. And then eventually high pressure does start to move in behind that system, helping to clear things out briefly before another wave of snow moves in across that region or another wave of moisture moves in across that region. But across the upper Midwest, this cold front will be bringing some intense severe weather to places like Wisconsin and Michigan and even Minnesota. So if you are in these areas, if you have family or friends in these areas, severe weather will be a big issue. And you can see that showing up here. We have this enhanced risk and a slight risk and even a marginal risk that stretches down into parts of Kansas. Now let's track the forecast as we head through Thursday, because once we deal with the severe weather today, high pressure moves in across that region. But that next storm system moving in from the Rockies brings rain, brings snow and it sweeps across parts of North Dakota and into parts of Minnesota, as well as into parts of Michigan. And then after that, we're talking about yet more cold air behind this system as high pressure moves in and then severe weather concerns farther to the south, but across some of the same areas that will be impacted today. So it will be very active and we're also talking about accumulating rain and even accumulating snow. And when we show you the snow, some of these areas can really pick up on some heavy snow as well as we can pick up on some heavier snow in the mountains. Now that was a look at the weather across parts of the upper Midwest when it comes to cold and snow. But let's take you one more place. Let's take you to the Southwest because they've been dealing with a lot of rain and we've seen some record amounts of rain across this region, leading to flooding concerns and making it very difficult to be anywhere around the Phoenix area and even some of the surrounding suburbs. So let's take a look at the rain total since Sunday morning. Places like Towers Mountain, uh, you all picked up more than 6.89 inches or picked up more or picked up right around 6.89 inches so far. Uh, we're talking about West Fork measuring more than four inches of rain. Phoenix International Airport measuring 2.75 inches of rain since Sunday. And when we talk about Phoenix's International Airport, well, now we're number three on the list when it comes to the wettest October's on record. So we've seen a lot of rain and we've only begun October. So that lets you know again what type of weather we were dealing with. And it was all because of what was happening with Rosa. Now Rosa is long gone. That's no longer a system that we are concerned with, but we're still dealing with some lingering leftover moisture from this system, as well as energy moving in from the Pacific. That's bringing us a chance for more rain across parts of Nevada and to parts of Utah and even into parts of Arizona. And when we talk about the rain that's on the way, well, we see it accumulating. It doesn't look terribly impressive, but again, these areas do not usually see a lot of rain. And especially this year, this area has been exceptionally dry. Uh, but it doesn't take a lot of rain to cause issues across the desert southwest. And that's something that we're looking out for as we head throughout the afternoon and evening. So we'll leave you with a look at what's happening 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We're talking about scattered showers and even some severe storms. Now, as always, you can watch us here or you can find us on Amazon Fire TV or Roku.